Hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO and this is Scary Scars Shared. In these interviews, I ask real project managers to share in around 10 minutes what they learned from their most challenging project management experiences. If you're new here, you might want to consider subscribing to the video channel or the podcast. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Kim Fitzpatrick, who's going to share some of her experiences with us. Kim, I'd like you to start by introducing yourself and giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management. Okay, I've been in um, IT for over 20 years. Um, I began as an IT engineer, um, working for a charity and um, a school. Um, I've, I think over the years I've actually moved on into project management gradually um, as times have changed. I've always stayed in the technology space because I'm a geek and <laughs> I, I love it, I love technology. So, um, so That's quite cool now, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> though I've been tempted off to go and work on business process projects right. and things I've actually held on to the technology side. Okay. Starting back from my, the beginning of my career I've actually worked in all aspects of IT so that can be back-end, front-end, um, running projects that are delivering applications, security, um, massive migrations of users, consolidations of offices etc and I think in the last probably four to five years I've run teams of projects, mm -hmm. so, so that's heading up um, technology projects in different aspects of IT. Um, so now um, I've come away from working on the corporate side and I'm working in consultancy. I'm working for several different clients mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's actually really exciting seeing how other people are doing um, technology and how they're working with the business to deliver business strategy. So looking back over your career, can you share an example of a SCAR, so a challenging project management experience and what you learned from it? One of the projects that I had um, within my portfolio mm -hmm. over the, the last couple of years was one where we were delivering um, back-end storage. And when, when we, the project came into my portfolio, um, it had been failing for probably about a year. Mm -hmm. um, they, the, the team that had been running it just couldn't get buy-in from the business. Um, no one really understood what the project was trying to deliver. What do you think led to that? I think it's very difficult for businesses to understand why they need to spend money in, in technology, especially in things that they don't see every day. So, for example, um, the core layer, the, the actual back-end systems that sit hidden away that actually support everything that every user sees on their desktop, um, it's very hard for, for finance to understand why they need to spend the money. Yep. Um, HR have no idea at all why, you know, what, what is that system? They, they only see what's on their desktop. So was it the kind of project that's uh, sort of like quite <coughs> low level architectural infrastructure? That Absolutely. Kind of thing? So, so an enabler. They sometimes get hidden, don't they? They yeah. do. And I think people, it, it's like anything, you, do, you don't build a house on sand. No. So, you know, you have to build the foundations and sometimes that can be the boring part. It's not very glamorous, is it? It's not glamorous. Those kind of projects are difficult when they're very technical and the business themselves don't really understand the benefit of them and why they need them, why they need it to sustain their business going forward. But if you, if you get excited about these things, if you get excited about technology, you can find yourself getting really into the foundations. As an example, um, when they were building the shard, Mm -hmm. um, there was a whole program about how they built the foundations of the shard and it was fascinating and I always thought okay if we can get that excited about those kind of things we can definitely get excited about technology mm. and the foundations of technology mm. if we explain it in the right way. Um, we actually looked at the, the team that were running it, we changed out the project manager and I think it's really important that you don't, you, you don't have a fear of changing people out if you need to, especially on long-term projects mm -hmm. because if you have a project that can go over several years, um, there's different elements to that project. So there may be the scoping out at the beginning, there may be delivery in the middle, and then there's the communication part at the end, and that's not always everybody's skill set. So um, on this particular project, in the middle piece, I needed someone that could come in and basically pull everybody together in the room and get them all on the same page, including the senior leaders as well. Um, the person that I ended up putting into that project um, was just one of these people that could actually take on the project, explain it to the people that were actually delivering it, then bringing people that are not used to technology projects into the room. So, so actually sh putting the project up on the wall so it's right. tangible. 
um, a programme plan written across several walls yeah. um, and then bringing those people into it as an immersive experience. Um, and that was from the lower down analysts right up to the senior execs as well. So they could walk in and actually see it in front of them. And that project then um, became a complete success in the sense because everybody was on the same journey. Um, and then um, it was delivered and it was fantastic for the business because it actually was something they've been trying to do for quite a long time. From that aspect, I think IT itself um, sometimes fails because they're not very good at marketing right. what they're actually trying to do um, and what, what drives everything, what is the core behind all of these fantastic applications that they use every on the day to day. What would you say you were the key things that you learned from that experience? It's really important as a program manager or a leader of projects to understand the people that work for you and what's their ultimate skill set, mm -hmm. what they what, what they like, what they enjoy, what they actually thrive on as as t as teams. Um, I've had people work for me that have been fantastic at delivering failing projects that have come in and absolutely hit the ground running and mm -hmm. can turn the project around. But they would be awful at running long-term two-year projects because they'd get bored. Right. So it's really important to me that I work closely with the team that work for me and I understand where, where they can kind of fit into the, the team and deliver those projects. One thing I, I did previously as well is bring all my project managers together across technology mm -hmm. so that they can all hear what's going on and then it opens their eyes to other opportunities within their own projects. Um, so from a people perspective, I'm, I've worked with some great people that I would work with again um, and I think you, you end up with a, a pool of people and you meet people along the way and you know that I'm always thinking, okay, who's the best person for that job? Um, and also, from a communication aspect, I don't, I don't think there is ever enough communication. So I think one of the things I've been trying to do over the last probably four years or so is try to market out the things that the technology team are doing. In one of my previous roles, I'd stand up once a month in front of all of technology and talk about the projects that we were delivering and explaining where they are, mm -hmm. um, who's actually working on them, and why we're doing that for the business. And it was brilliant, actually. I used to get co um, conversations in the corridor, people coming up going, oh, I didn't know you were doing that. I actually have a project that could really do with part of that project. So it actually socialized these projects out into the, to the technology team and then out into the business. Mm -hmm. That's really, I think that again comes down to communication. Um, I don't believe in hiding what technology does. It needs to be there sitting at the table with the business. Yeah. Kim, thanks for your time, your openness and your insights. So today we've heard from Kim about how she recovered from a challenging project management experience in a portfolio context and what she learned from it. What can you learn from this? What will you do differently in your projects as a result? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this interview, let me know by leaving a comment or a like or both or with by sharing it with others on social media. If you're new here, you might want to consider subscribing to the video channel or the podcast. If enough people will think these interviews are worthwhile, I'll make more of them. If you want to share your scars in one, let me know. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. For articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website pragmaticpmo.com or follow me on Twitter at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell, Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for listening.